Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may enlighten in your will and walk in your ways to glory and name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. pray together Psalm 103. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. So to take care of your great kindness. He will not he always accuse us, nor will he keep his, his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon them so As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed us from our sins. As the Father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong that they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. 
But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. And this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children in all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into the prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, They were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I greet you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've often heard the phrase, To forgive is to forget, as in, if you're going to forgive someone for something that they've done to you, 
after you forgive them, it should be like it never happened in the first place. Forgive, forget. Move on with your life. It's all done now. I think there's some truth in logic to the phrase, but I certainly don't think that it's a full picture of forgiveness. It doesn't fully encapsulate what it means when we say, I forgive you. Even more, it doesn't fully capture what it means when God forgives us. As it is with a lot of things in Christian discipleship, the act of forgiveness is really about transformation. It's a process of being changed. The act of forgiveness is about altering a relationship. When I hear the phrase, forgive and forget, what I really hear is a desire to go back to the way things were before. Let's go back to how it was. I don't want to be burdened with the weight of this transgression any longer. But I don't think that that's what this process of forgiveness is all about. It's not a return, it's a new beginning. It's a way of saying, let's start afresh. Let's give it another go. Our lesson from Genesis this morning gives a great example of this. You'll remember in the story of Joseph that his brothers sold him into slavery because they were jealous of his relationship with their father Jacob. Joseph escapes his bonds and eventually becomes quite powerful in Egypt. He uses his faith in God to help Pharaoh leave Egypt during a terrible famine. The famine is so bad that Joseph's brothers come to Egypt seeking grain out of Egypt's bounty. His brothers don't recognize him. After all, they think he's long dead. After a little bit of tricking, Joseph finally reveals himself to his brothers and welcomes them. Long story short, Joseph saves his brothers even after they have treated him with unimaginable disdain and hatred. Later on, their father Jacob dies, and Joseph's brothers are worried that Joseph will seek his revenge for their misdeeds now that, jo now that Jacob is not there to protect them. It's a fair assumption. They did pretty terrible things to Joseph, things that haunted them things that they felt they should be punished for. Joseph, in all his power and authority in Egypt, had every imaginable means at his disposal to seek revenge against his brothers. But of course, that's not the path that Joseph chooses. As Joseph's brothers fall down before him and beg for mercy, Joseph says, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Have no fear. I will provide for you and for your little ones. Joseph chooses forgiveness. Joseph chooses to be fully changed. And just as importantly, Joseph's brothers choose repentance. They choose to apologize for the way they treated Joseph. It's not a return to the way that things used to be. As we've seen in Joseph's story, a return to the way things used to be wouldn't actually be very good for Joseph. Returning to the old ways would be returning to a relationship with his brothers that was full of ill will and contempt, even hatred. Returning to such a relationship would be a waste of time and a waste of the true grace of forgiveness. Joseph chooses to forgive his brothers and start anew. And likewise, Joseph's brothers choose to accept that forgiveness and to live into the repaired relationship. They choose to be better than their former selves. They choose to try and live a better life. They become transformed and renewed. So in this, we can see that it's not about forgetting, it's about transformation into a new life filled with grace. 
Our gospel passage this morning is a reminder of what happens when that transformation doesn't take place. Jesus tells a parable about a king and a servant. The king begins to reconcile his accounts and calls before him a servant who owes 10,000 talents, a sum which one scholar notes would take nearly 150,000 lifetimes to pay off. When the man begs for mercy and explains the situation, the king forgives him of his debts. But just as quickly as the man leaves the king, he comes across another man who owes him a much measlier 100 denarii, which might be comparable to a small car loan. You would think that the man might be overflowing with the grace showed to him by the king. If he no longer owes a debt, which would take him 150,000 lifetimes to pay off, certainly he might also show the same mercy to someone who owes him a couple of thousands of dollars in today's money. Unfortunately, that's not the case. The man has not been transformed in his state of forgiveness. He has not been changed by his encounter with grace. He grabs the man that owes him the measly sum and demands it to be paid. Once the king hears of it, he calls the man back and tortures him until he is able to pay his great debt. Jesus uses this parable to remind us that we too have been forgiven of a debt that we could not pay in our lifetime or 150,000 lifetimes. We, too, are on the receiving end of undeserved grace. The mistake that the man made in the parable is that he was forgiven, and then he forgot. He forgot that he was wrapped up in grace. He forgot that he had received forgiveness that was not due to him. Rather than starting his relationship anew, and afresh, he returned to his old ways. Essentially, he didn't live into the transformation of the moment. So like I said, forgive and forget doesn't quite capture the Christian understanding of forgiveness. Perhaps forgive and refresh, forgive and renew, forgive and forgive. Now, it's not that there aren't things that we should forget about or let go once we've received forgiveness. Joseph's brothers let go of the pain which they have carried for years. They let go of the profound shame and sadness that they felt from the terrible acts they committed. In renewing their relationship with their brother Joseph, they let go of the shame. But they don't forget about what brought them to that point. They don't forget about why they ended up needing forgiveness in the first place. The experience is one of learning, growing, and transforming. Part of their journey of forgiveness is an acknowledgement that they don't want to be in that situation ever again. That is the process of repentance. Perhaps you might feel like Joseph's brothers, carrying around the weight of something that you need forgiveness for. It might be a relationship with a family member, a friend, an enemy, or even yourself. Perhaps you think that you aren't deserving of that forgiveness. Perhaps you feel like Joseph, willing and waiting for those who have harmed you to come and seek the forgiveness that you are ready to give. Perhaps you are ready to start a relationship anew, but the other party just isn't there yet. There is pain in that waiting. The message that Jesus gives us today is that forgiveness is within our reach because we have been forgiven. The chance to start anew is ever-present because grace abounds. God's grace surrounds us and embraces us.
And so with that, let us pray. O oh God, whose grace is a constant companion in our lives, be with us as we work to forgive as we ourselves have been forgiven. In your grace, enlighten our minds, stir our hearts, and strengthen our wills to do your transformational work in the world. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, 
O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Grace Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the morning. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give us the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving or concern, silently or aloud. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, God. Alleluia. Alleluia.